this is Naveed here. Welcome back to Naveed Automation Labs. So a quick question that I asked yesterday on LinkedIn also in this particular poll that uh, what will be the output of this particular question, right? It's slightly tricky. I know that, but it's not that uh, uh, tricky also that people are actually not aware of it. I'm really surprised to see the result also. Uh, majority of the people they have given the wrong answer. Only 20% people they have given the right answer out of 1600 votes. So the right answer is the second one, true, false, and false for this particular question. Let's see, very important for interview point of view. This is the concept of integer caching. So remember one thing that uh, here we are creating the what? We are creating the variable, I1 and I2, for example. So this is not the primitive data type. We are not creating with int over here. We are creating with the integer, which is a class, which is a wrapper class in Java already, right? So what happens? There is a concept of integer caching integer caching means java will hold some cached value for the integer only the spatial treatment given to integer so minus 128 to positive 127 now some people were thinking that uh minus 128 to positive 127 is the range for byte no that's a different thing that is for the byte primitive data type here we are talking about the integer caching which is already cached it is already there in the pool in Java, these values are already pretty defined for the, let's see, inside, inside some caching memory or integer caching memory here. So if you are creating any integer variable, let's say integer i1 and i2, within this particular range, so we have given 127 and 127. So most of the people that exactly they were thinking, if you have no idea about this particular concept, so we know that, okay, this is my, for example, let's see, this is my stack memory and this is my heap memory. Inside the stack memory, this i1, and i2 will be created here, right? i1 and i2. So people were thinking that, okay, maybe it's creating uh, uh, two objects over here, one object for 127 and one object for 127. They both are pointing to the respective values. And we know that, okay, in Java, whenever you are using double equal to, it will start comparing the references. So output should be false here. No, output is not false. Why? Because this 127 and 127 is coming in this particular range. So how many values will be created? Only one value will be created, that is 127 over here. So both are actually, this is 127. So I1 is also pointing to 127 and I2 is also pointing to 127. It means the value is common, value is same actually. It's only single value for both the variables. So I1 double equal to I2, it is actually doing what? It is actually doing the auto boxing internally. It is auto boxing means it's actually converting this 127 which is actually a kind of you can say non-primitive variable uh to i'll say non-primitive variable to the i'll write non-primitive to the primitive uh, data type it is actually doing it this is called like auto boxing which is entirely happening over here so that's why it will consider only one single value in the memory 127 127 and we know that okay for the primitive one now both are automatically converted to the primitive one and for the primitive conversion, we always use double equal to. So that's why I1 equal to I2 is giving me true here because both are having 127 here, right? But now we are talking about I3 and I4, which is 128 and 128. So how many objects will be created in the memory? Now 128, one object will be created and another one object, 128, two objects will be created, 128 will be placed here and 128 will be placed here. It's not in the range of this integer caching so this is for i3 and this is for i4 when you try to compare it will start comparing the references memory address right not the actual value so it will start comparing i3 and i4 which is obviously both are not equal so in that case it will give you false over here but if you really want to compare you should use i3 dot equals method in order to get true here right equals method will always check the content not the references so that's why the output will be false here now the third part is integer i5 and i6 we are creating the object and then inside the constructor we are passing 127 127 over here in that case what is happening in that case first of all this is giving me a deprecated warning because from jdk 1.9 onwards uh integer caching or sorry integer constructor is actually deprecated you see that this integer int is deprecated since java 9 so that's okay this is deprecated not the error so what will happen, how many objects will be created at line number 17 and 18? It will create two objects, object number one and object number two. This is represented by i5, this is represented by 
referred by i6 over here. So obviously two fresh objects got created because you are using the new keyword over here. And when you try to compare with double equal to, once again, it will try to compare this particular reference i5 and the i6. So obviously references are not same. Their memory address are not same. So that's why it will give you false over here. Does not matter you have written 127 or 127 here. You are creating explicitly, you are creating a fresh object here with the help of new keyword. So that's why it will be false here, right? So that's why if you run this particular program, let's quickly run it and then um, let's see here. It is actually giving me true, false, and false here, right? So this is the right answer for that. Okay, so let's quickly do this one experiment. What if I'm writing, let's see, minus 128 here, both side. This is also in the range. Yes, so in that case also, it will give you true. So let's run it. And then let's see that again. So yeah, it's giving me true here. What if I'm giving, let's see, negative 129 here, and then this is 129. This is not in the range of this. So now in that case, it will start giving you false here. So you see that this is a false here. Okay, so I hope this is clear now. Now, one small thing interviewer might ask that, is it fixed? Yes, first of all, it is fixed. It is default one. But can we change it? Yes, it can be changed. It can be customized. It can be configured in the form of Java variables, in the form of like Java virtual uh, uh, VM uh, arguments that we can supply it over here. How to do that? See this carefully. What if I really want to change this particular range? I really want to increase this range. Then in that case, what should I do? So when you do this thing in Eclipse, simple go to run as run configuration, go to their uh, VM configuration, go to arguments, and under the VM argument, you just simply use this particular, uh, use this particular argument, minus x, x colon, auto box, cache max is equal to 1000 here. It means it will take up to 1000. So when you click on apply and then run it, right now we have changed the range. Now if I'm giving, let's see, here I'm giving, let's see, uh, hidden 1000, right? So we have given, let's see, 900. And now we are giving 900 over here. In that case, it will give you true because now the range is up to 1000. So in that case, if I run it, you see that here, it will start giving me true here, right? So earlier we have written 128 and 128. Now the range we have increased to up to what? It increased up to 1000. Then in that case, 128 is coming in this particular range up to 1000. Yes, so it will start giving me a true over here. Because we have given this particular uh, VM argument true and true here. Now see this one quick, quick thing. You must be thinking that, okay, then what is a negative uh, value? So guys, remember when we increase default to 1000, it means it will start from minus 128 to 1000. So now what is the new range? The new range that we have given negative 128 to 1000 over here, right? So for example, if I'm writing, let's see, uh, minus 128 in that case also, it's coming in this particular range, it should give me true here, not false. So let's see, see this is giving me a uh, true here. But the moment I, let's see, go before negative 128, now I'm writing negative 129, then in that case, now it will start giving me false here because negative 129 is not coming in this particular range here. So it's giving me false here. So remember one thing that uh, you must be thinking that can we give, can we change the range for minimum also? No, as such, we don't have any range for the minimum. We have only this one, minus XX auto box cash max. You cannot give cash minimum. Cash minimum is already hard coded in already predefined in Java. We cannot change it. Only we can just change the max value of the caching. If I'm giving the max value caching is equal to 1000, now the range will be 1000. Tomorrow, if I'm giving up to 5000, it will go up to 5,000 here, right? So what is the advantage of this? What is the advantage of integer caching? By default, it is up to 127, starting from minus 128, because integer is the, okay, I would say minus 128 to positive 127, these are the most frequent numbers used in any application. Do you think about, let's see if I'm creating some employee age, like all the employee age, if I'm writing with the integer parameter over here or with the integer upper class, age one, age two, age three, let's see 100 employees are there. So obviously that I'm creating, let's say 100 employees, they are having between one to 100 range. So unnecessary objects it will create inside the memory. But to optimize the heap memory, they have given this particular caching concept. In your application, you think, okay, no, uh, there are n number of variables of integer that I'm going to create with the 
integer upper class, but the range is slightly high. I don't want to create unnecessary duplicate objects inside the memory. Then you can customize the higher range also here. But the negative range is always fixed in Java. So I hope this is clear. What is the concept of integer caching?